let us pray. Dear Lord, on this day of great joy, we come in your presence. On this day, Lord, that hope has been restored, that li life has triumphed over death, we come to you. Lord, as we stop for a few moments to reflect on the scriptures we've read, we pray that our hearts will open to you just like a flower opens to the sun. Speak to us. May we hear your voice. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. If we were at our Salvation Army Hall, I would have heard you all shout back, He is risen indeed! And I hope you're doing this from your homes today. Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! You may have remembered it also in Greek, Christos Anesti, Alithos Anesti, He is risen indeed. The resurrection of Christ changes everything. The resurrection of Christ is the one single event in world history that has cha changed the course of humanity, only perhaps to be paralleled with the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ, to be paralleled by God breaking into our human history and becoming one of us. The resurrection of Christ, it's that the one single event that changes our outlook on life. We went through our Holy Week, through the Holy Week meditations and our Good Friday service. We mourned for the death of our Lord. We mourned that our sins have pierced Him on that cross. We mourned that death seemed to have triumphed over life, that evil seemed to have triumphed over good. But today, the sun has come up. Today, Christ is risen. Today, we can celebrate that death does not have the final word. Resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus Christ has proved that life is stronger than death, that the death, that the grave could not hold Jesus. Life burst forth from the tomb. And today, you and I can celebrate. Good Friday was a very grim, sad day. It was a day of despair and loneliness and sorrow. Perhaps what some of our fellow human beings are feeling today through this pandemic. Just when we thought that we were at the top, just when we thought that uh, we were the masters of our faith, just when we thought that we didn't even need God, we didn't have room for God in our schools, in our governments, in our lifestyles, in our communities, then this microscopic virus comes and makes us realize how helpless we are, makes us realize how, how we are so weak, so insufficient. On that dark day of world history, when God himself, who had become man, was laying in a tomb, then the sunshine broke through. On Easter Sunday morning, it is the tradition of Gillingham Salvation Army to meet by the riverside and sometimes, when the sky is clear, we would see the sun rise 
And as the sun rises, we remember that Jesus rose from the dead. Our son of righteousness rose from the dead. Our son has come up and chased the shadows of darkness. Our son has come and has changed everything. We've read from the Gospel of John about Peter and John running to the tomb when they heard that Jesus' body was not there. There is a beautiful painting by Eugene Bernard of John and Peter running to the tomb. And she portrays beautifully the the mix of emotions that they must have felt as they ran to that tomb. Fear, wonderment, excitement, questions. What happened? Where is the Lord's body? What happened? Could it be true? Could it be real? That Jesus rose from the dead? He told us that. He told us that the Son of Man would be crucified, but in three days he will rise again. Is it true? These feelings, these emotions, are something that you may be sharing. These feelings of, is it true? Jesus rose from the dead, and if he has, that means that you and I may one day also rise from the dead. There is now no fear for those who believe in Christ. Death was holding our human race in its grip. We were afraid. We were scared of death. Death had the final word. But now, God's people are not afraid to die. You may have heard on the news about Don Giuseppe Berardelli, the 72-year-old priest in Lorere in Italy, who refused to use the ventilator as he was lying sick with COVID-19 in hospital. His parishioners put money together to buy the ventilator so that he can recover, but instead he insisted that the younger patient uses it. And on the 15th of March, he died. I hope that as this news went around the world on the media, I hope that people were able to, to catch a glimpse of what this new life that God is creating is like. There is now no fear because death is not the end. This morning I'm speaking to you from my back garden under my young apple tree. My apple tree for several months looked completely dead. Just a bunch of dead branches. Look at it now. Young leaves and, and blossoms are shooting and, and it burst back into life again. God has, through nature, revealed the mystery of the resurrection. Our Mother Earth, every year at springtime, shouts it out, life has conquered over death. This is why Christians are not afraid to die. Why should we be just happy with uh, a miserable existence of crawling on the earth when we can be beautiful 
butterflies. The Apostle Paul used this metaphor of the caterpillar and the butterfly to help us understand the change that will take place after our resurrection, after our death and resurrection. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 that we've read together, he scolds the Christians or some of the Christians in Corinth who did not believe in the resurrection. He writes, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty, and your faith is also empty. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is one of the foundations of our faith. If we don't believe in the resurrection of our Lord, as the Apostle Paul says, our faith is empty. My heart goes out to young theology students like Arniki, who are taught by the, the, the teachings of some uh, Christian theologians of uh, the more like the liberal persuasion who taught that you don't necessarily have to believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. What a lot of rubbish! If we don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Apostle says our faith is empty. If Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable, and I like the word in the authorized version, we are of all men most miserable. If we don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, if we don't believe that we will rise from the dead, if we don't believe that death does not have the final word, but life springs out after death, then we are of all men most miserable. But the resurrection of the dead is real. The body is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. That's why we can say together with the prophet, O oh, death! Where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? Christ is risen. And the angels have shouted it out. He is risen indeed. And Christians have been shouting it out from the rooftops. And the saints throughout the ages have been shouting it out. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Life is had burst forth from the grave. Death could not hold him. Death could not hold the author of life. And now you and I don't have to be afraid of death because life everlasting, life with no pain or sorrow or death, is waiting for us. Heaven is waiting. And we Christians long to get there when God calls us. Let's pray together. Lord, your gift of life. For your gift of life we thank you. Lord, for the good news of the resurrection we thank you. 
Lord, that death does not have the final word. We thank you. Jesus, you are alive. You have risen from the dead. And through your death, you defeated death. And you need to hear this today, Lord, when there is lots of death in our world today through this pandemic. You have defeated death. Jesus, in you we trust. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.